Cool. Thanks for the introduction. <coughs> okay, so hello everyone. My name is Jun Gong. So I'm a fifth PhD student from X Discovery Lab at Dartmouth College. Today I'm going to talk about Tesotivo, contextual interactions on interactive fabrics with inductive sensing. This work was in collaboration with Yu, Lei, Daddy, and my advisor, Xun Dong Yan. So before I talk about motivation and related work, first of all, I just want to quickly show you what is Tesotivo and how Tesotivo works. So Tesotivo is a contact-based inductive sensing technology for contextual interactions on interactive fabrics. It uses six by six spiral coils made of conductive threads to recognize conductive objects when you place these objects on the fabric. Just like this demo video shows, the conductive objects that are commonly found in people's daily life, such as quarters, pop can, and a USB drive, can be recognized. I will talk more details about implementations and applications later in this talk, but before that, let's get start with the motivation and related work. So nowadays, fabrics make up an essential part of our daily life, since they are generally lightweight and highly flexible. They have been widely applied in a variety of applications, like clothes and infection, furniture and decoration, such as sofa, cushion, and tablecloths, bags and toys. Since objects that are already made or covered by soft and lightweight fabrics are everywhere in our daily life, plenty of existing work is trying to add, add some interactivities into these fabrics. For example, Project Record from Google uses a new type of conductive yarn that can be woven into the textiles to enable touch based on capacitive sensing. The yards and textiles can be produced by the standard textile manufacturing process. And a small sleeve can also sense both surface and deformation gestures in real time. It expands the vocabulary, gesture vocabulary using advanced deformation gestures such as twist, fold, and stretch. A more recent work, RESI, proposed a newly designed yard compressed of a metallic thread with a resistive coating. It enables textual pressure sensing a simple structure. So far, current techniques on interactive fabrics mainly focus on sensing the touch or deformation of the fabrics. So last year at West, we presented Indutivo. It uses inductive sensing to recognize conductive objects and their individual movements when you place these objects against the sensor. So this year, we bring this sensing technology to the fabrics and provide new opportunities for contextual interactions on interactive fabrics. So before I dive in, First of all, let me briefly explain how Tesotivo works. So our sensing system consists of an LC tank, including an inductor, or say the sensing coil, and a capacitor. The LC tank is connected to an inductive sensor that can track the inductance variance of the LC tank. When a conductive object comes within the proximity of the coil, a circulating current induces an electromagnetic field coupling between the sensor coil and the conductive object. This coupling will induce another circulating current called eddy current on the surface of the conductive object. In turn, the induced eddy current will generate its own electromagnetic field coupling, which opposes the original field generated by the inductor. Objects in different resistivity, size, and shape will have different coupling effects, which can be shown in the form of a slight shift of the inductance of the LC tank. And this is what we use to distinguish different conductive objects. To enable greater sensing resolution in two-dimensional space, we build a dense grid of coils for both sensing the shapes of the object's contact area as well as detecting objects' movements on the fabric surface. So that's for the sensing principle. Next, let me talk about the coil fabrication. So unlike the Indutivo, just printed the sensing coils on a rigid substrate using copper wires, one of the biggest challenges of Tesotivo is how to fabricate multi-layer sensing coils on the fabrics. So first of all, to pick a proper material to make these sensing coils instead of the copper wires, we use the conductive threads, which can be easily stitched on a fabric to spiral the coils. Among what is available on the market, we picked and tested four candidate options that are highly conductive and relatively thin. So based on our initial test, we finally choose Liberator 40 made of civil plated fiber for our current implementation, since it is the most conductive thread among four options and its conductivity is about three ohms per meter. To stitch the conductive threads into the fabrics, we use a home embroidery mach sewing machine. The patterns of the coils, like shape, size, and spacing, can be designed use using graphics editing software and sent to this machine. 
So here's a video showing you how it works. To improve the sensitivity, we also designed a multi-layer structure of the sensing coils. Just like this image shows, the green line stands for the non-conductive thread, while the blue line stands for the conductive thread. We carefully tuned the tension of the top non-conductive thread to ensure that the conductive thread on the bottom only floated on the surface of the subject without penetrating it. So that we can put two layers together without causing any short circuits, just like this figure shows. The coils are well aligned and phasing outwards. In total, our sensing coil have four layers. We stitch a conductive thread in the middle two layers, which are connected using twist spice. And the coil layers are then sandwiched between two isolation layers to allow the coils to be shorted by the conductive objects. So besides the coil fabrication, the key to the success of using inductive sensing is the design of the sensing coil because it affects the sensitivity, sensing range, and the recognition accuracy. The first thing we need to consider is the coil shape. In principle, the coil can be made into any shape, but the most common ones are, are square, circle, hexagon, and octagon. The circular coil has the best quality factor and lowest serious resistance, allowing the largest sensing distance. A square shape has the largest sensing area per coil unit in a 2D space. <coughs> so in this work, in order to maximize the sensing area and keep a small sensing distance to a wild force positives, we choose square shape. And second, we also need to consider the coil size. Our goal was to design the coil to be the smallest in the size without violating the inductance requirement because a small and a dense grid of coils enables a greater sensing resolution in a 2D space for both sensing the shape of the object contact area as well as detecting objects movement on the fabric surface. So last but not least, coil inductance is also an important factor in our design process. In principle, coils with lower inductance can increase the sensitivity of the system. Due to the time limit, I will not go into the details about how we derive a formula for calculating the inductance of the coils made of conductive threads and how it helps to decide the coil shape parameters like number of turns. If you're interested, please refer to our paper for more details. So here's our prototype. Our prototype consists, contains a grid of six by six square shaped coils. Our customized sensing board uses multiplexers to control the columns and the rows of the coils. All sensor readings were sent to a laptop for data processing via Bluetooth. So next I'm going to discuss how to use this prototype to perform real-time object recognition. So when a conductive object is placed anywhere inside of the sensor, the sensor reports a six by six array of inductance values, one for each coil, and we call it two-dimensional inductance footprint. It describes the ob object's material like resistivity and the low resolution geometry information of the object's contact area. Based on our observation and initial tests, we extracted 81 features that are environed to the locations and orientations of the contact area of the object. The features can be divided into ta two categories, shape-related features like number of covered pixels and the material-related features like mean and the medium. After the feature vector is packed, we fit it into a random forest model since it has been found to be accurate, robust, scalable, and efficient in many applications. And we use the output from the model as our prediction results. So we put the objects that can be detected into four categories. First of all, small conductive objects whose contact area is smaller than the sensing area, like this candy box. So in the following demo video, I'm going to show right away, the detected item name will be shown on the left and the heat map image of the inductance footprint will be shown on your right. And the sensing area is marked by the pencil. So here's a demo for the short conductive, for the small conductive objects. We included more than 10 different conductive objects in this category to encompass a broad range of different properties like sizes, material, and shape. So the next category is large conductive objects whose contact area is larger than the sensing region. Most of them are electronic devices with built-in metallic components. As you can show, as shown here, our system can recognize the Apple pen with the Surface pen since they're different in electronics. Front and the back of the same device can also be identified. 
For some of the conductive objects, we also try to attach a strip of copper tape to create a unique inductance footprint so that the same object can be used for different purposes, just like this video shows. So to enable non-conductive object sensing, we instrument them using copper tape with different patterns that can be distinguished by the sensor. As you can see here, the system can successfully identify different books with different co copper tape patterns, and the heat map image reflects the co copper tape patterns. Besides the object recognition, Tessotiva can also support object manipulation. Here are some examples using a color candy box. and the iPhone. So to validate the system's accuracy and robustness, we ran a 10 participant user study. Each participant was asked to place 27 objects on the sensor in random orientations and locations inside the sensing area. Each object was repeated for five times in a randomized order. And the participants were asked to place the tested objects on the seat of sofa instrumented with our prototype we deliberately designed this procedure to evaluate how the collected object model worked in a more realistic setting. So we pre-collected data from one volunteer three days before the study and trained the model for later real-time evaluation. Note that this volunteer was not recruited again in the study, and it turns out that our system can achieve an overall real-time classification accuracy of 93.9%, which is very promising considering no pre-user calibration, no user training, and a considerable time separation between the experiment and when the training data were collected. So that's for the uh, evaluation. Next, I'm going to talk about several conceptual demo applications. We envision five demo applications on a tablecloth, in a pocket, and a backpack to showcase the possibilities of TESOTIVO. So the first application is a hydrogen tracker. Placing a stainless mark on a tablecloth starts the timer, and the reminder is sent to the user's phone if the mark stays at desk longer than a preset time period. And the tablecloth in a meeting room can also sense the laptops on it to imply there is a meeting. With this information, a user's phone is set to a do not disturb mode automatically. When dinner is ready, the tablecloth on the dining table can sense the utensils and the baking tray. Your delicious meal is ready downstairs. And to remind the child on a different floor to come to the kitchen and eat. <laughs> so the tablecloth can also be combined with a backpack. A nearby floor lamp is switched on when a user grabs his Kindle from a table. And after the user finishes reading and puts the Kindle into the backpack, the lamp turns off automatically. A pocket that is, that is instrumented with TESOTIVO can detect if the user's phone has slipped out of the way, out, out of the pocket when they have gotten up and left from the sofa. <laughs> Okay, that's for the conceptual demo applications. Next, I will discuss the future work. First off, first of all, with our current implementation, the threads are stitched tightly inside a small area of the coil, which has made the subject high, harder than it was before the instrumentation. We believe it will be interesting for the future research to consider the trade-off between the size of coil and how well we can preserve the softness of the fabric substrate. And second, Sensor readings can be affected if the coil is deformed, and which may introduce false detections. But on the other hand, we might also be able to use this property to sense the fi fi fabric deformation. And finally, in our current implementation, objects are required to be in contact with the sensor, so it would be interesting to explore the situations where the objects are within a short distance range from the sensor, just like the keys in the pocket. So with that, I would like to conclude our work with three take-home messages. So we present a technique using inductive sensing for contextual interactions on interactive fabrics. Our technique can precisely recognize conductive objects. And we believe TESOTIVO holds the potential for seamless contextual sensing using interactive fabrics. So that's all I want to share about for today. So a short ad before the questions. 
I'm on the market, job market this year and looking for research positions <laughs> in industry and academia. Thank you. Thanks for that great presentation. Um, very creative use of uh, Faraday's law of inductance. Uh, so we have time for one or two questions from the audience. Hi, uh, thanks for the inter interesting presentation. I have one question. Uh, so if the fabric does not allow the deformation, what is the benefit of using the fabric for this technique? Uh, sorry, could you say that again? So if the fabric doesn't allow any deformation, what is the benefit of using the fabric uh, for this technique? Yeah. Uh, so you are asking if the... Uh, so is there any uh, potential application which utilize the deformation or stretchable properties no, no, of no. the fabric? Uh, so right now we did not use any uh, deformation properties of the uh, fabric, so we just... Uh, uh, place the objects on the fab on the sensing coils, and it sends the uh, objects on it. So there would be a, it would be super interesting for us to explore the uh, deformation properties of these uh, uh, fabrics because uh, the coil inductance will change based on this uh, deformation of the fabrics. Uh, okay, Rong Hao Liang from TU and have a great talk. Uh, with higher frequency signal, an inductive sensor can be used to sense finger touch. Do you have any early experience about that? Yes, yes. So basically, in our, uh, in our paper, we also present that this uh, sensing coil can also sense the uh, uh, finger touch. But uh, here, uh, we did not run a formal investigation on, I mean, uh, ask participants to tap on the, uh, the sensors. But yeah, it, it, is, it is going to work on sense for the finger touch and even multi-finger touch. Um, I think we have to move on due to time, um, but I'm sure the authors will be available after the presentations. And let's thank June once more. Thank you.